Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jim Bob, and I'm here planning out the electrical system inside my van. So today we're in the shop and I'm gonna be kind of going over what the van currently has and what's gonna be changing. Because in two weeks we're going to Wasatch Overland and we're gonna be getting our high roof installed. And that's gonna give us six and a half feet of standing room on the inside. So that means the inside has to change. Because we're gonna really kind of be building this thing out a little bit more, we want a real electrical system on the inside. And that means all this stuff has to go inside. So let's kind of run over what I have over there and how I think it's going to be installed. And so I'm going to go over a couple things that are already installed on the van. Um, it does already have an S-Pod. It has a six switch S-Pod with the U-joint off-road mount and the U-joint switch mount. And that's going to control kind of the off-road lights. We've got some squadrons on Vantage Optics mounts and there's an Onyx 6 light bar down here. Plus. I've got some of these other S2s from Baja Designs that are going to go onto the high roof as camp lights and as a dust light. And the starting battery is a full throttle FT93065 and that is just really only going to be running the S-Pod that's running kind of the lights and maybe if I ever get a winch but it's not going to really be running any of the house stuff that's all going to be over on this system that we're going to go over today. Okay so first up we've got a CFX75. That's going to be a bigger fridge with also a freezer compartment. So we're pretty excited to have that. We also have a few different Baja Designs S2s that we plan on using as camp lights and dust lights. And we have a SeaTech 20 amp onboard battery charger along with a SeaTech Smart Pass 128 management system. So those will be kind of charging off the alternator and also controlling the solar. Now as for what's gonna be powering everything, it's these two DC 11512s. They're 100 amp hour batteries from Full River Battery. And thank you to them for their support over the years. They have done an excellent job and I love all the batteries I've ever had from them. But we also have an S-Pod Bantam that's gonna be controlling everything inside the van. And I can't wait to get it all installed but I'm not gonna be installing it in this video. This is more of just a planning video. So let's take a look inside and kind of see how we have it laid out now and what we could change. Okay, so real quick, let's kind of run through how the van is set up right now. As you can see, the CFX 55 right now just lives behind the driver's seat and it's tucked in there very well. The PLB powers it and it's worked great for short trips, but as we start moving into longer trips, we're gonna need a more dedicated electrical system. So this is gonna be one of the main components I'm trying to figure out today is, should the fridge stay right here? Or should I move it over to that wall, like in between the fuel filler neck and the driver's side seat? Or should I leave it just kind of crammed against the seat that way? There isn't a ton of room in here, which is a bummer being the regular wheelbase fan, but I think we're gonna be able to make it work. And the other aspect I'm trying to decide is where should the house batteries and electrical system live? And I'm basically thinking that it's gonna kind of go over there underneath that corner of the bed, because as you can see, Ford kind of sets up the wiring to come in through this up here, and I could just as easily run it down to that. But the other option is put it back um, by the back door and underneath the bed over there. But I don't know if I really wanna put everything back there. I kinda of like the idea of having it right here in our old van. The battery system was right here and the fridge was over there, but it was an extended wheelbase, so it was a little different. All right, so as you can see here, these are the two fridges. This is the 55 and this is the 75. So the 75 is bigger, but it's not insane. I think we're gonna be able to make it work Okay, so as you can see, I think that's gonna be the call. Uh, I don't think it can go across that wall. It's just gotta go right there. And while it is big, I think we're gonna be able to make it work and I can still leave that fork mount so I can leave bikes inside here if I have to go inside a restaurant or whatnot. And the PLB is not gonna be there anymore. Um, so that'll free up some space. And we don't really go between the driver's seats or anything just because we do have that Kelty box and that kind of keeps everything organized. So. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is there a better way to do this? 
that fuel filler neck really just kind of ruins it. Uh, the fridge would have to sit too far off that wall to really have it make sense to do it that way. Okay, so that's pretty much where the fridge is gonna go. I don't really see any other way that it could go. And I do still need to decide where the house batteries are gonna go, where the SeaTech management system is gonna go, and where the S-Pod's gonna go. My idea is I'm gonna build a wood box and the batteries will be strapped down in there and everything will be bolted to the wood. And I wanna kinda of put it in the front corner of the bed over there. That seems to make the most sense, that's where the battery box was in our old van and the only other option would really be the back corner and I'm just not sure I want to run everything back there and then have to run it forward so if you have any advice if you built an Econoline before or if you just have some insight leave a comment I read all the comments and I would love to get some insight on how to do this because I'm not an expert at electrical stuff and just all comments and insight are a great thing to have. The more eyes on it, the more ideas. So definitely let me know what you think and uh, I'll see you on the next one.